Should we sing the first verse over again? and see. It takes them a while with the incense. Yeah, let's do all four. <laughs> Where is my hero?
Welcome to presentation of the Blessed Virgin Mary on the Solemnity of the Most Holy Body and Blood of Christ. If you're visiting this morning, we welcome you and we invite you to worship with us again. Please rise as we sing number 914. Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, what a glorious morning for us to be gathered on this feast day of Corpus Christi, the most holy body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so to help us to prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries, 
let us call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. This wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion. Grant us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption. Who live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. When Moses came to the people and related all the words and ordinances of the Lord, they all answered with one voice, we will do everything that the Lord has told us. Moses then wrote down all the words of the Lord and said, rising early the next day, he erected at the foot of the mountain an altar and 12 pillars for the 12 tribes of Israel. Then, having sent certain young men of the Israelites to offer holocaust and sacrifice young bulls 
as peace offerings to the Lord. Moses took half of the blood and put it in large bowls. The other half he splashed on the altar. Taking the Book of the Covenant, he read it aloud to the people who answered, All that the Lord has said, we will heed and do. Then he took the blood and sprinkled it on the people, saying, This is the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you in accordance with all these words of his. The word of the Lord. reading from the letter to the Hebrews, brothers and sisters. When Christ came as high priest of the good things that have come to be, passing through the greater and more perfect tabernacle not made by hands, that is, not belonging to this creation, he entered once for all into the sanctuary, not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, thus obtaining eternal redemption. For if the blood of goats and bulls and the sprinkling of a heifer's ashes can sanctify those who are defiled so that their flesh is cleansed, how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself unblemished to God, cleanse our consciences from dead works to worship the living God. For this reason, he is mediator of a new covenant, since a death has taken place for deliverance from transgressions under the first covenant. Those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance. The word of the Lord. Lord, 
the angel's food is given to the pilgrim who has striven. See the children's bread from heaven, which on dogs may not be spent. Through the ancient times of feeling, Isaac bound a victim willing. Pascal lamb its lifeblood spilling, manna to the Father sent. Very bread, good shepherd, tend us. Jesus of your love, befriend us. In the land of life to see your eternal goodness send us. In the land of life to see you who all things can and know. Who on earth such food bestow? Your saints who lowest will the heavenly feast you show, follow theirs and guess to thee. you and with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to mark on the first day of the feast of unleavened bread when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, Jesus' disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? He sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and a man will meet you carrying a jar of water. Follow him. Wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, The teacher says, Where is my guest room? where I may eat the Passover with my disciples. Then he will show you a large upper room, furnished and ready. Make the preparations for us there. <clears throat> the disciples went then went off, entered the city, and found it just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. While they were eating, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, gave it to them, and said, Take it, this is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, and they all drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed for many. Amen, I say to you, I shall not drink again the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Then, after seeing him, they went out to the Mount of Olives. The Gospel of the Lord. <clears throat> My dear brothers and sisters, 
What just happened in the gospel reading? Do you remember? It was just a moment ago. What just happened? Speak up. The Last Supper, right? And so at this Last Supper, the Lord was like, I'm hungry. I'm about to be crucified. So, what do I want? Maybe a T-bone, a ribeye, and some potatoes, but even better than potatoes, maybe some rice on the side, right? And that's what, he was, and that's what happened at the Last Supper, right? A medium rare steak, no? So what happened at the Passover meal? What took place at that Last Supper? I can't hear you. The Eucharist, are okay. So the Eucharist took place. It was instituted, right? We hear how Jesus gives us that blessing. Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my, blo- this is my body. Take and drink. This is my blood, which will be shed for you and for all. This is the new covenant. And when, not in this gospel, but in another gospel reading, we hear how at the Last Supper, it's also said that Jesus says to his disciples, Oh, how I have longed to have this meal with you. Oh, but how I have longed to have this meal with you. And is this the first time he's had with... Is this the first time that he has had this Passover meal with his disciples? Oh... Is this uncertainty? You guys don't know? Every year the Jews are commanded to have a Passover meal. So it's not the first time. But this is the first time he said this that we know because it said so in the Gospels. How I have longed to have this one with you. Because again, this time is different from the years before. This time, as I said earlier, He knows what's going to come next, his crucifixion. And so, what is the Passover meal? Do you remember? Where where does it come from? Where does it originate? What is the Passover meal? I need you to be quicker. I need you to be louder. (laughs) What is the Passover meal? Something passes over, right? That's why it's called Passover. Is it about an airplane flying over the city? Hey, it's doing a Passover. Right, Mr. Joseph? Is that what it is? No? Yeah, it's a flight from Egypt, right? It's the last miracle that God will perform to save his people from the Egyptians. This last night, he says to his people, prepare an unblemished lamb to be sacrificed. Take its blood Put the blood over the lintel of your door, so the frame of the door, so so that when the angel of death comes to your house, he may pass over and not cause death to occur in this home. That's why it's called the Passover. The angel will pass over this home. And so God commanded them, do this every year to remember what I've done for you, to save you from slavery. And so here is Jesus saying the same thing to them again. I saying, how I long to have had this meal with you because now you will take my flesh and eat of it and take my blood and drink of it. I am that unblemished lamb, the one sacrifice that will truly save you from slavery. And what a beautiful thing, dear brothers and sisters, because as he said this, he also said, Do this in memory of me. In the same way that God commanded all the Israelites, all the Jews, to continue to celebrate the Passover every year, Jesus says the same thing to them. Come together and celebrate this Eucharist regularly. And do we still do that today? Do we still do that today? All right, come on. Conviction, confidence. That's why we're here. That's why we celebrate the Mass. This is what it's all about. We're continuing to do what Jesus commanded us. 
Do this in memory of me. Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body. Take this, all of you, and drink of it. This is my blood. So if he says those words clearly to us, I believe that we think that he means it. And that's why we've been doing it for almost 2,000 years as Christians, as Catholics. Because we take him by his word. Who is Jesus? Son of God. Who is Jesus? You guys got to be clear. Come on. Abby, who is Jesus? Our Savior. What else? He's got to be more than that. Son of God, the Savior. Someone in the back is raising their hands. Got to speak up. Speak up. Who is Jesus? Jesus, the whole world? Yes, he is. But let's sum Jesus up in three letters. Who is Jesus? He is the Lamb of God. He is God. Right? We need to be able to respond faster, my dear brothers and sisters, and with more conviction and more confidence. I'm not just doing this to try to entertain you. I'm doing this on purpose. I need you to respond faster. I need you to respond with more con- conviction. I need you to respond with confidence. Why have we been gathering for over 2,000 years if we still don't know who Jesus is? Yesterday we celebrated the beautiful day of St. Justin Martyr. And when he was brought in to court to uh, worship false gods, his response to the governor was, anyone uh, who is of right thinking would not leave true worship for false worship. Anyone who is of right thinking, who knows this truth, who understands it and believes it, would not leave true worship for false worship. And because he was unwilling to give up his faith to, uh, for false worship, they beheaded him. They cut off his head. And that's why we call him a martyr. And he was willing to do it because he was convicted of the truth. He was not afraid to speak it, even in the midst of persecution. And this is why I said, and this is why I ask you questions. I need you to respond faster, stronger, more conviction, more confidence. Don't be afraid. You know the truth. Jesus has shared it with us in the scriptures. Speak it and live it. And this is why we have this beautiful feast day of Corpus Christi. The most body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. If you have heard anything this past year, what's been going on here in the country, the bishops have been preparing a Eucharistic revival. A Eucharistic revival here in our country, in America. And the whole point about this Eucharistic revival is to and I'm going to paraphrase, wake us up. Somebody is here in this Eucharist. Somebody is here at the Mass. Do we know who it is? And we're not talking about you. We're not talking about me. Someone more special than you and me. Who is that? Jesus. Do you believe it? Good. You guys are getting better. I love it. And the whole point about this Eucharistic revival is to wake the Christians up. Us Catholics up and to say, pay attention. We don't just come to church for Mass for the sake of coming. We're coming for a real encounter. Jesus, truly in our midst. Do we believe it? And if we do, Sisters, look around you. Why is there so many open seats here in our church? 
But not just here, I'm speaking in general. In all our churches, where are the people? If they say that they believe, why aren't they here celebrating with us, with Jesus? This is, we have this feast. This is why the bishops throughout this country have been preparing for this beautiful uh, Congress, this conference, to remind all of us, wake up. We have someone here who's been waiting for us. And at this Mass, heaven comes to earth so that we can have a glimpse of it, a taste of it, truly in our lives, and yearn for it more and more. But not just for us. We need to want it for the world as well. We need to bring the people together and say, come, follow me as I follow Jesus. Come with me for this beautiful meal that has been prepared for us from heaven itself. We are all called to take part in this mission. Not just me, because I'm the priest. Yes, it's my job. But all of you too. That's why you're here. And this is why at the end of the Mass, there is the dismissal. Go, live out the Gospel by living it out in your lives. Because you have all been called to do the same thing as me, but in a different way. To bring back to your families, to go to school, to go to work, wherever you're going to go, to bring Jesus to them. And we need to do that, my dear brothers and sisters. Because this is the beautiful gift that God has given to us in himself. And why we gather frequently for the Mass for this reason. For food from heaven that would save us from the angel of death. This is the Passover meal that he's given to us every day. Food from heaven to nourish us and give us life. Believe what you say. Believe what you do. Have conviction in it. Be quick to respond. Be like our brothers and sisters who have gone before us, who have handed on the faith to us. Be not afraid. This is our faith. This is why we do what we do. This is why he did what he did for us. To call his family together to say, Remember me. Remember me. Remember this celebration and continue to do it. What a beautiful gift we have been given. And after this celebration, as I have been sharing the last couple of weeks, there will be a, a time of procession in the church and adoration to spend time with our Lord. And so for those of you who are able to spend a little time with us, with him, I invite you to do so. And I'll give you more instructions when it's time. Coming together as a family, let us profess our one faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life for the world to come. Amen. Because we know we have a Father in heaven who loves us and calls us to himself as his beloved children, we bring to him now these petitions. For the church, that we will deepen our love to our Eucharistic Lord, who gives life to the world through his real presence in this food from heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we will, be, we will become more and more like Jesus, whom we will soon receive in the Eucharist. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May the power of the Eucharist transform the hearts and minds of all who govern, especially in those who profess to be Christian. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the National Eucharistic Congress that will take place in Indianapolis next month will stir the faithful in our nation from sleep and become courageous and bold in living out their Christian identity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our school staff, all teachers, and all students, who have either completed this current school year or are almost there, especially all those who have graduated at any education level. May the Holy Spirit continue to imbue you with his wisdom and knowledge so that you can set the world on fire with his love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our brothers and sisters who are homebound and shut in, May they be drawn deeper into the mystery of the holy body and blood of Christ and be filled with a greater outpouring of hope and joy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick and suffering, especially from illness, violence, and natural disasters, may Jesus give them the hope, healing, and peace that they long for. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. For those who have been called to the eternal banquet, eternal banquet of to the banquet of eternal life, Mary Freney, Freney, whose mass of Christian burial is June 14th, and for those who grieve for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Lucille and Bud Wilson, for whom this mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord. Heavenly Father, hear these prayers and petitions spoken and unspoken in the silence of our hearts, and please make them your own. Through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Oh, yeah. 
Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and all of the Holy Church. Grant your church, O Lord, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace, whose signs are to be seen in mystery in the offerings we here present. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through who Christ our Lord. For at the Last Supper with his apostles, establishing for the ages to come the saving memorial of the cross, he offered himself to you as the unblemished lamb, the acceptable gift of perfect praise. Nourishing your faithful by this sacred mystery, you make them holy so that the human race, bounded by one world, may be enlightened by one faith and united by one bond of charity. And so we approach the table of this wondrous sacrament so that bathed in the sweetness of your grace, we may pass over to the heavenly realities here foreshadowed. Therefore, all creatures of heavenly hosts cry out, and without end we acclaim.
therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, Bernard, our Bishop, Michael, his auxiliary, and all those who holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and improve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said a blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. A mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we will cling to death or all until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you are pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. 
Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with a sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies. Graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb.
Of the Son of Man, 
Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that we may delight for all eternity in that share in your divine life, which is foreshadowed in the present age by our reception of your precious body and blood, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, there's been a lot of exciting news in the last two weeks in our school, not only because school is ending, I know the children and the staff are excited for that, but also we have been able to find a new principal for our new school year, Mr. Matthew O'Keefe, who is actually one of our current fifth grade, uh, who is currently our fifth grade teacher, and so what a blessing it is for uh, him to be our new principal in our school. Uh, heartfelt, great, uh, our heartfelt uh, thank you. <laughs> to Mrs. Lovegreen for her wonderful service to our school these last four years, especially coming in in the midst of the pandemic and to help keep our families safe and to keep our school open. So thank you again to Mrs. Lovegreen. And also after 10 beautiful years of service here at our school, Ms. Linda Charnowski will be leaving us. Um, but have no fear, we have Mrs. Mary Devini who will be taking her uh, role in the school. And so how blessed we are by having these beautiful women in our lives. We also have Miss Elena Butler, a parent from the school, who will be taking on our school uh, marketing and communications coordinator position as well. So many beautiful things are happening, but still I ask for your prayers for our school because we, uh, so many families depend on our school, and so please continue to pray for the success of our school. This uh, Thursday is the last day of school, and so masks will be at 8.45 this Thursday, 8.45. Next Sunday is our 15th annual pilgrimage walk to the cathedral at noon. And so I invite you to join us on this pilgrimage walk. See the bulletin for details. And also save the day for Sunday, June 23rd from 12 to 2 p.m. Our Sunday fun days are back. And on that Sunday, it's bring your own picnic. But also there will be games, inflatable, and ice cream available. So again, see the bulletin for details about all these exciting events that are going to be happening this month. And as I mentioned earlier, and as I have been sharing with you before, uh, in just a few moments now, we're going to have a Eucharistic procession around the church with our Lord truly present here in the Eucharist. And so for those of you who are able to stay and pray, I invite you to do so. And after we do a little procession in the church, there will be a short period of time for adoration together. And so I invite you again to join me, to join each other, to spend time with our Lord, and to give to Him yourself, your families, your friends, your school, your work, your city, our nation, give him the world. Please kneel.
take me as I am. So mine outright I shall be. Set your seal upon my heart and live in me. No.
them bread from heaven. Have we no sweetness within it? Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you gave us the Eucharist as the memorial, as the memorial of your suffering and death. May our worship of the sacrament of your body and blood help us to experience the salvation won for us 
and the peace of the kingdom, where you live with the Father and the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. The divine praises. Blessed be God. Blessed, Blessed be, God. be God. Blessed be his holy name. Blessed, Blessed be his holy name. Blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be his most sacred heart. Blessed be his most sacred heart. Blessed be his most precious blood. Blessed be his most precious blood. Blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the Paraclete. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the Paraclete. Blessed be the Great Mother of God, Mary most holy. Blessed be the Great Mother of God, Mary most holy. Blessed be her holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be her holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be her glorious assumption. Blessed be her glorious assumption. Blessed be the name of Mary, Virgin and Mother. Blessed be the name of Mary, Virgin and Mother. Blessed be Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse. Blessed be Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse. Blessed be God in his angels and in his saints. Blessed be God in his angels and in his saints. Please stand. <clears throat> 